Great. Thank you. Uh, good evening. It's the December 4th, 2014 meeting of the Sherburn Board of Selectmen. And we'll start by asking our town administrator, Dave Williams, to read the agenda, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first, we'll vote to approve or amend the agenda and add topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance. And we have a request for one item to be added from the Council on Aging for our grant acceptance. And then a public comment period of 10 minutes. And then a look at the Comcast um, cable license, a vote and execution of the agreement. And then proclamations for Ruth Hohenshaw, town accountant, and Paul Leach, town volunteer. And then uh, some, a couple of appointments to the Farm Pond Advisory Committee and the Elder Housing Committee. And then the chair of the Cemetery Commission will be in for an update. And then uh, we'll look at the FY16 budget and war warrant uh, with the notices of intent. And then finalize goals and objectives and look at the meeting calendar, set the next meeting for December 11th and then approval of several minutes and approval of a warrant and then break into executive session not to return to open session to discuss possible litigation as it pertains to letter from attorney regarding the health agent. And that's, that's the agenda. So do we have a motion to amend to add the uh, council on aging request? So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. And we, we can put that. Um, we could put it near the front because I see Karen's here. Um, I just don't know. The folks from Comcast are here too, probably, right? Yeah. Okay. I thought she, I saw she's something. going to be around for the proclamations. Okay. All right. Good. So we'll do it right after the proclamations. How's that? Okay. And so we have Mr. Taylor has asked for some time to make public comments. <clears throat> Elliot Taylor, 30 North Main Street. The door and the petition between these two rooms does not close properly. Right now, there are about five chairs propped up against the other side of that door so that the door will stay closed and it won't just swing open and we can hear the two meetings at once. I think it should be fixed immediately it's been this way for two or three weeks now. And uh, it's also, I declare it a fire hazard. Uh, if we have to evacuate this room, we cannot easily open that door because there's about five chairs piled up against the other side of it. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just before this meeting, why the uh, town administrator was made aware of this problem, problem, and he looked at it. And so uh, maybe in another year or two, it'll get fixed. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure it'll be taken care of sooner than that, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. very good. Um, and, and so now we have a Comcast. Uh, we'll, we'll need a vote and then uh, execution of the agreement. Is anybody making a presentation, David, or are we all set? Yeah, it should be here. Okay, so should we hold off until they get here and move on to the proclamations? Yeah. Okay, good. Although, w was anybody planning to be here for the proclamations? I know we're pretty early for the proclamations. No. Just Karen. Okay, you don't know of anybody else who wanted <clears throat> to be here for these? Okay. That's fine. That's excellent. I just meant someone who wouldn't be here who would be offended if we didn't wait. But let's uh, let's get our. Uh, actually, what we could do is we could do the minutes now because those aren't mm -hmm. going to take anybody else's time. Is the board okay with that? Doing the minutes? Yep. Uh, I'll stand down on the October 15th minutes just because I wasn't present there for that. What a fun night you missed. I, I, I saw the video. Okay. No approval of October 15th. And I will second that. And uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. So that's uh, two to nothing with Peter abstaining. Abstaining, yeah. And then and we have I would move to approve the minutes of... Uh, September 4th, 2014, and October 1st, 2014. Second. Okay, any discussion of those? Any changes or anything? No. Nope. Okay, all in favor? Aye, those are approved. Great. And are we, we're probably close to caught up. It looks like we're getting towards November, right? We're getting there. Okay, <laughs> good. And we're pretty good at posting our minutes on the town's website. 
I, I was flipping through the town's website today, and and I, you know, because some folks say, "Geez, it'd be nice to see minutes." So every month you get ours up. It, it would be nice if some of the other groups followed suit. So that's just something to recommend. No, but I'm suggesting other minute, other committees, and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Well, that took 45 seconds. Nicely off the done. That was really, Chair. really excellent. Um, <laughs> want to do the COA thing? Um, we could. Sure. Do you, you want to, since this is a new item, Karen, why don't you tell us what's what's going on with COA? I just received word today that we received um, continuation funding from the Metro West Healthcare Foundation. Um, it's a continuation grant because we applied last year with Dover and Holliston and received funding for the program, which was called Matter of Balance. Um, within the last year, all three communities have put approximately 55 seniors through the program. Um, and the program is six sessions. They're, they're taught by two physical therapists. Uh, our session was taught over at Woodhaven, and we had 18 seniors run through the program. And I had a waiting list of nine more. So I was thrilled that we were given the money to refund the program. Um, it's great. It, it talks about um, balance, exercise, um, healthy eating, it talks about drug interactions, um, and the folks who have gone through the program really, really enjoyed it, said they got a lot out of it. So we're thrilled that we were refunded. Well, that's great. So and, I asked and, you to, do you need us to accept it or anything? Or yes. I'm sorry? Do you, do you need us to accept okay. those funding? Um, if you wouldn't mind, I think that would be nice. All the funding is running through Holliston. Um, they, get the, they get the check and then disperse the funds. Okay. But if you wouldn't mind, we, we could go sure. on record. Well, move, move to ac accept the funding of this grant through the town of Holliston and to authorize its expenditure for the purposes set forth in the grant. I second. Okay, any further discussion? I just wanted to you know, thank, thank you for working on that and getting it again. Yeah. The grant is resource. just under $10,000. Great. Perfect. So we're very happy with that. Excellent. Well, we're thanking, I, I want to thank you for the great festivity this afternoon at the uh, Council on Aging party. Uh, Selectman Caruso and I were there and enjoyed ourselves. Fine lunch. I, I didn't go for the dessert, but I was very tempted. Yeah, there you go. Good. <laughs> well, there's always next year. Thank you for we putting, had about, thank putting you. that on. There were what, more than 80? There were more than 80 people who were there, so it was, it was great. We had a... Um, a nice contingent from the town hall. We had the, the red chief and the blue chief were there. Um, the town clerk was there, the town um, tax collector, and it was great to have everybody, both from town hall and the seniors and the two of you. So thank you. Glad for I was able to go. Appreciate it. Excellent. So we need a vote still. We've got a motion, a second on the table. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, great. And. I think we can move forward with Comcast if they're here. I thought I saw somebody from our committee outside. Did you? Okay. Bob Ambos was. I thought, I thought so. Doug, yeah. Oh, Doug Ambos, excuse me. Yeah. He has the actual documents. Oh, we're, wait, we're waiting for Attorney Solomon? Okay. Traffic was pretty bad out there. <clears throat> Had to fight my way through it. It was bad. You could set the next meeting and do the warrant. Um, sure. So next meeting, the, I guess the plan is to make the next meeting next Thursday at 6 p.m. Okay. Thursday the what? The 11th. Okay. The usual time and place. I thought we were skipping weeks. Just this time of year, it's oh. a little hectic. So we've been going each week around the holidays. I recall a suggestion recently by another member of this board that we might not want to skip weeks much these days because we had so much business. So, and I thought that was a good idea. If we're going to run late. Yeah. So I, so I think if we've got enough for the agenda next week, we probably could, could have that meeting. Unless let's, let's vote to set it. People object? And no, I think we should. I think okay. we probably have uh, okay. a lot going Great. on. Okay. So let's set that meeting. And Doug, we, do we have everybody we need yet? Uh, not yet. Uh, Bill Solomon just called, says he's stuck in traffic. He's okay. about 35 minutes away. I think he conveyed that to Diane as okay. well. So you have a, a couple choices. 
you can uh, uh, vote to approve the, the uh, Comcast license renewal as, as given and then sign it later, or you can wait for him to come and, and be able to ask him any questions that come up. Well, he has a document to be signed. That's right. He's got clean <coughs> copies so ready to be signed. It, it seems to me it would make more sense to have him here with the original documents. Sounds good. Yeah, that, that probably makes sense. And then we can get assurances of what we're signing and Sounds good. so forth. And then he could also describe the additional side letter he was able to secure uh, late today. We have we that, just saw that one. Yeah, that's okay. great. That's great. OK. Thanks. Okay. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, I'll call him back we'll, and tell him your Yeah, way. tell him to speed and. <laughs> I won't tell him. But not through town. Speed safely. Right. Okay. That's great. Uh, okay, so we, we do have a couple of proclamations. I guess we could, could move those through uh, now if nobody else is coming for those. And. So which do you want to do first? Um, I don't know. Should we do Mr. Leach? And I think you'd indicated a okay. desire to read that poem. Absolutely. Read Bruce? So Leach first? Yes, is a proclamation for Paul Leach as a town volunteer. All right, so I move that the following proclamation be issued by the Board of Selectmen. It reads as follows, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Town of Sherburne, a proclamation. Whereas D. Paul Leach, a longtime resident of the town, has been an integral part of the town of Sherburne, serving the community on numerous town boards and committees for more than 20 years, more recently as treasurer of the Council on Aging, secretary of the Disability Advisory Committee, cemetery commissioner, and member of the Traffic Safety Committee, whereas Paul has been an active member of the Nipmuc wood cutting crew and helped to clear the fallen trees from Sherburne Forest and provide firewood to seniors and residents, whereas Paul's interest and ongoing support of public safety issues and the needs of seniors and the disabled has brought awareness and improved walkways and better signage for the town. Now, therefore, we, the selectmen of the town of Sherburne, on behalf of all its citizens, extend our gratitude and appreciation to D. Paul Leach, in witness whereof we have caused the seal of the town to be affixed to this proclamation on the fourth day of December in the year 2014, and then follows the signature lines for the selectmen if we adopt this motion. So I second your motion. Right, wholeheartedly. Any, any discussion, Paul, do you? It's just a, it's a, it's a loss when a member of our community passes on. We celebrate his life. We appreciate all the things that he's done for the community. We, we wish his family well and this is the least that we could do in memory of all the service that he has done for us. Would a moment of silence be uh, appropriate at this Certainly stage? Certainly would, yeah, sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll pause for a moment of silence. Do we vote this yet? Yeah, I, I don't know if we vote. Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> sure we <Okay>. do. <laughs> Short-term memory loss. Great. Okay. 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 I'm going to take that or somebody's going to take that. Thanks, Karen. Did you, you want to read? Uh, All right. So tonight? yes, I move that we accept this uh, following proclamation on behalf of Ruth Hohenschau, our uh, town accountant, who is retiring at the end of the year. 
and it's a proclamation. Whereas Ruth Hohenschau has a long history as a resident, a volunteer, and a dedicated employee of the town of Sherburne. Whereas Ruth has served the town of Sherburne in a variety of roles since 1980, including a period of time as administrative assistant to the town clerk, treasurer, and to the town accountant, interim town administrator, member of the insurance commission, computer use committee, focus three group, handicap committee, West Suburban Health Group, Employee Health Insurance Advisory Committee, and as town accountant from 2001 to the present. Whereas Ruth is given of her time and financial expertise to counsel an infinite number of town departments, boards, committees, and officials as they navigated the complex waters of budgets and bills for the town of Sherburne. Therefore, we, the selectmen of the town of Sherburne, on behalf of all its citizens, with the deepest respect and gratitude, extend our sincere appreciation and warmest wishes to Ruth for all the best in her retirement and thank her for her dedication and service to the town of Sherburne. In witness whereof we have caused the seal of this town to be affixed to this proclamation on this fourth day of December in the year 2014 and signed by the Board of Selectmen. Second. Great. Any, any discussion? Just uh, Ruth taught me everything I know about municipal finance, accounting, and budgeting. So uh, that, that second whereas really, uh, third whereas really struck home. I, I'm struck by the, uh, by a number of things in addition to, you know, Ruth's hard work for many years, but just the number of roles she's played. And, uh, you know, between uh, Ruth's proclamation and, and uh, Paul Leach's proclamation, we have looks like about 55 years of volunteer time by two people on, you know, a, a 15 boards, something like that, without, without counting, which just is a great um, example of the kind of service people in Sherburne give to the town and, and the kind of long-tenured uh, volunteerism we have around here, which is really the only way this town gets through is with uh, really dedicated volunteers and, and employees like that. Just to put a, a, a number to that, the proclamation says that she started in her roles, this is for Ruth, in 1980. In 1980 to 2014, my math is correct, is 34 years of service. Thank you, Ruth. Okay, great. All in favor? Aye. Great. clock is ticking and we are waiting uh, I guess we're waiting still on uh, <coughs> okay. attorney Solomon so we'll uh, we'll go on to uh, the routine business the first uh, the first item up is a farm pond appointment David do you want to uh, give us the background on this one yep uh, there is a vacancy on the farm pond advisory committee Catherine Rocchio the chair of the committee requests that the board of selectmen vote to appoint Sophia Hill to a three-year term expiring June 15th, 2015. Second. It should be 2017, is that what you said? He no. said 15, 15, but 17. Yeah, it should be 17. The, the motion is different from the from the statement. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wait, whatever I wrote in the, the motion, I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> expiring June 15th, 2017. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And uh, does anybody have any discussion or comments I know uh, Sophia lives next to the pond and I'm sure she's got a lot of expertise in the pond and I know the committee had been looking for a, a nearby neighborhood resident for a while so th yeah she's thank, her, thank her for stepping forward okay all yeah. in favor sure we have, we, we so have I move that we appoint Sophia Hill to the farm pond advisory committee for a term of three years expiring June 15 2017 Second. okay all in favor Hi. Right. It's great. Excellent. And uh, we have a second appointment here, David. Uh, the next appointment is um, a letter from Kitty Sturgis, Chair of Elder Housing, putting forth the name of Susan Landsman for the Elder Housing Committee. Susan's been uh, a resident of Woodhaven for several years now, um, and uh, some residents recommended her uh, to attend a meeting, and she is now um, interested in serving on that committee. That's great. Do we have a motion and a second? 
So I so moved, uh, I move that we appoint Susan Landsman to the Elder Housing Committee for a three-year term expiring June 15, 2017. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Right. Aye. And, and uh, we thank her also for stepping forward on this position. And uh, David, how many, uh, is, that, is that a full complement of members now on elderly housing? Yeah. Elder housing? Yeah. yeah. Good. Excellent. That's Both perfect. of those um, so committees are... So we filled up two two boards. That's good. Okay. Next, we have Chucky e. Blaney on the cemetery commission had wanted to meet with us. Are you ready to ready to go on that? Sure. Oh, <laughs> because she wants to. I, I'm just I'm just looking at the agenda. Sorry, I'm just looking at the agenda. And your name's on here, so I called you. I'm, well, see, I didn't realize you just write a letter and nominate somebody and then not have to come. I didn't know that. I watch you at home. I don't tend to come to your meetings. Uh, uh, we have a vacancy on our committee, and we would very much like to have Sue Tyler fill out Paul's term, which expires the end of this cycle, May or June, whenever okay. this year's term's due. And I am so excited to have somebody who is a doer and fills in everything that I don't like to do and already has a whole lot of cemetery experience and is enthusiastic and actually had talked to us before we had any idea that we were going to lose Paul because she was going to run okay. in the coming year. And Paul had realized that for all the things that he did, it's really hard to run a cemetery when you can't see and you can't drive. It's, it was very limiting for him, and he did really well to stay on as long as he did, and we loved having him there. But yes. David, what's the step? Is this, I know we typically post vacancies. Has this been posted? No, this hasn't been posted. Just in the past, the selectmen have asked things to be posted online and get the word out for a few weeks before ma bringing a name forward. Um, in, in, in this one, we would have to jointly approve with the cemetery commission. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Well, we'd like a, to get somebody soon. Summer. I have four burials lined up between now and Christmas. I mean, I would love to have some help. So maybe next meeting. Well, I, I'm happy to do it next meeting. I just, you know, I, we were always uh, told that people want us to have the right process, and this is the first time it's been so, posted. So we can uh, post it tomorrow morning on the website? Yeah, and, um, and see if, see if, if there's anybody there's any else's interest. interest. I'm perfectly happy with the recommendation. And bring it back um, Thursday. It's, it's not at all substantive. But you have to invite the cemetery the commission. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the way the process right. works, if I could be recognized, is that yes. when there's a vacancy on an elected board, the board of selectmen and the remaining members of the, the board upon which there's a vacancy meet together and every member of this board and every remaining member of the cemetery board together constituting five people need to vote to elect someone by three votes out of the five and that person takes office until the next annual town election so it's not to fill the unexpired term but I think his term was expiring anyway, it was. wasn't he? But it's just until the annual election. And, and the other point I wanted to make was that it, it, it has been our practice and it should continue to be our practice to, to provide the public with notice whenever there's a vacancy and allow anybody to come forward who wants to come forward. Well, between this notice on you know, of the meeting and David's going to post it. I think we'll have notice by next week if somebody's interested and, in, uh, you know, steps forward besides Mrs. Tyler, we could consider them. But uh, I don't think we'd need to postpone it beyond next week, particularly given the, the plea that more hands are needed. Well, it would be helpful to me if I wasn't doing everything. Sure. <laughs> and Sue fits in so perfectly. The things that she likes to do, I don't, and vice versa. Just on she's been coming to our meetings and she's already been helping us. She single-handedly um, got Brush Hill, the two um, prison cemeteries cleaned up this year on her own initiative and then came to us and said, it's okay if I do this, worked with the prisoners, got them down there and then herself took away all the trash rather than calling the town to do it. And she works at Middleborough. Yeah, it does some cemetery in Middleborough, family cemetery already. Has a lot of experience with doing that type of thing. 
you know, this goes back to my great grandmother and all, and uh, she was uh, instrumental in helping the cemetery down there back in the uh, late 1800s. And, wow. all, and so it's kind of been a family tradition, and we are quite involved. And, and uh, I've now got another generation behind me involved. And they can go and they can say what needs to be done. We fix the water pumps, we do everything. So, sounds like a, and that's what I don't a great do. candidate. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I do like, not do that. Like I do burials and work with families, and I would love to have somebody else that can read contracts and build roads and fix the water and do all of those things. Can, can I ask you while, you while you're here, what's, what's underway up there? There seems to be a lot of uh, clearing uh, on the ground, and, and I was at another meeting where somebody raised the question earlier in the week, and nobody really knew. I the know, answer. and David emailed me, and I wrote you back tonight because I, my computer died while I was in Salt Lake, and so I'm basically working with nothing right now. Um, I can write new things on my little laptop, but I don't have any of the history of any of the old things. I can't write an annual report. I can't look up past stuff, anything like that. We're going to get it fixed because I kicked my husband and said I need a Christmas list. Um, we, about four or five years ago, cleared four acres back there, and we're developing a new area for burials. And the big issue right now is there's, there's a huge ledge at one end of it. It's like a cliff. And there's a man, and I don't know his name. Um, it's like Sphinx, but we call him Brownie the Blaster. He's over in Hopkinton, and he's been recommended by the town, and he's done work for us before. We had him over here this fall, and he recommended we need to clear the rock off, get the loose rock off and the dirt off, and see what is actually under it. <coughs> and then in the spring, he's going to make some proposals about, um, rather than blasting it, what do you call it, like chipping it or fracking it? or mm -hmm. See, this is where I don't know that kind of stuff. I just do it. Um, and so we hired Nat Dows to go up there and he has cleaned off the rock and there's no point in getting rid of what he took off the rock until we know if we can use it in other projects up there. Um, there's no burials up there. There's really no good road up there. There's, I hate to say so because I don't want to offend people, but there's no reason for people to be up there. Um, it's not in a part of the cemetery you can see unless you go kind of down around the back and, and behind some hills. And it okay. will be cleaned up when the project is done. Do um, you know my daughter, Janet Walsh, um, is a landscape designer. She's just gone on the Woodhaven group to help them with their landscaping. She's going to draw up plans for us okay. for plantings, how the road should go so they have a little sex appeal, as she puts it, not just be straight. Um, okay. She has some really good ideas about what to do with this. We call it a cliff. She's talking about putting a, a seating area on the top of it and she's hoping to work with a family who lost a family member, see if they would like to have a bench up there in her memory um, on the side of it because it's a pain in the neck to try to mow the side of a cliff. Um, no, she's no, talking no, about so. building a, like a wildflower butterfly garden up there. Um, she's just got a whole pile of really good ideas and a lot of the rocks that we're taking that are loose we'll probably be using so we don't want to get rid of them until we know. Well, I, I would think you wouldn't want to get rid of them anyway, right? I mean, they're probably good for something in the town. Well, we've told, we've told a couple of stonesmiths who built stone walls in the past that they are more than welcome to can come take any loose rocks out of the hills. Because when we do a burial, we often take out good-sized boulders, and they just get tossed up in the woods, and we don't need them up there. And a couple have, and some families have availed themselves and had them move down to their lots and use them for gravestones. Um, I don't know if you have had a cause to go up, but the Elwells did that this past fall, and the, their rock is lovely. It's just an old rock that was lying around up there. Good. Well, that's a great, great it's answer. It's recycling. <laughs> when people ask, then we at least have something to tell them. And, yeah. and I did write it to David and there. Diane, so they can forward that on if somebody great. has a question. And I would also say, as long as I think we're on television here, if people have a question about the cemetery, ask me. You know, don't always call David. Let us answer your questions. Excellent. I think we're pretty good at it. <laughs> Very good. Just a comment on timing. Yeah. The Dover Sheridan Press comes out on Thursdays, so this announcement is too late for this newspaper. It won't come out until next Thursday. So it really would make sense to do this the Thursday after rather than next Thursday. In the paper? Yeah. 
we are we planning on advertising this in the paper? I don't think so. We haven't been advertising. How do we let people know our vacancies? I mean, at that time of year, we've put, you know, in the spring, we've put a placement ad in a notice of vacancies. But um, since then, we've just been advertising on this website. Posted at Town Hall? The yeah. town's website? Yeah. You posted at Town Hall, you can post it at the library. I mean, this? That doesn't sound. The other two appointments that just met, just advertised in the paper also? I don't think so. And I received an email, if I may, I received an email that was sent to me on November 25th notifying a huge area of the town about this vacancy and that will say, stating the whole process and that a letter should be sent to the town of Selectmen to, to the Selectmen if there was any interest. Where'd, the letter, where'd that letter come from? A member of your board. Okay. Thank you. And I know in the in the past, I don't know if you're still doing it. They used to run a banner across the bottom of the local website. They said what the vacancies in town were. Mm -hmm. You guys still do that? No idea. Is there any banner across the bottom of the screen? There used to be. We we on the Dover Sherburn yeah. on the site that you're on, it would often have a list of you know just one of the, I don't know what you call it, but we, yeah, we have the vacancy list in Dover Sherburn. Yeah. Okay, so that comes on. Okay, good. I think we've got a plan. Thank you. Okay. And is Attorney Solomon here yet? Doesn't look like it. Oh, I think so. No? I may, I may miss out. Um, okay, should we talk about the uh, the warrant and the uh, notice of intent and budget development? What's up? I'll try. We can, um, the warrant is the. Um, the bi-weekly payroll warrant for one, one extraordinary employee. Oh, it's that warrant. The outstanding employee, huh? Great. Second. All in favor. All right. What, what did you say we're going to go to next? Um, are we doing the NOIs or anything? Yeah, we yeah. can start reading through those. Yes. Is today uh, the date that the NOI, the last day, or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. So. But that, but that's. I mean, that opens the warrant, right? I mean, we, we're opening yeah. the warrant. Yeah. I think we've heard from everybody to get placeholders yeah. that we're going to hear from. If you want to. Um, this is updated from your packet. Oh, yeah. But when when this this doesn't the warrant doesn't close. We're not closing. No, the warrant closes January fourth. Right. So I mean, people people who January didn't 5th. people who didn't submit an NOI yet didn't yeah, they didn't do us any favors, but they're not precluded from adding something to the warrant. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. The warrant um, is set to close on January fifth. Um, it's been open um, technically, I guess, since December first. Okay. And then the NOIs we had due December fifth, and. Um, <laughs> But yeah, people could submit an NOI after that, and we would add it to the list. Um, you want to walk down through them? Or is there anything new since last week? We went um, I, last week. I think in the bottom there's a there is a a town meeting warrant signing um, article from the town clerk that wasn't on your previous list. And what is that? Too? Um, I haven't read it yet. That was, came in today or this afternoon. Do you have a copy of it? I don't. Yeah, it'd be good to know what the new yeah. warrant is if we're going to talk about it. We would have, uh, wouldn't we add, we're going to have, what do we call that thing with the regional school? And we just saw an email I from I don't think them. we need a warrant on that, do we? I think uh, that's... Will be, they, they will have a capital request, I'm sure. You mean about the IMG? Right. We'll and have, then we... We'll have a budget request, but we can approve it. We can approve the agreement, the agreement yes. separately. Yes, that's right. But but still, you need a placeholder for a regional capital request. Right. Unless it's on here, I, I didn't see it. Just scanning that quick. No, we have um, we have another sheet. I that, see what you're saying. Yeah, that has um, item 36. Yeah. Pine Hill School Improvements number. Oh, there it is. Okay, uh, okay, that was new. Yeah, 34 and 36. We have the amount placed in the. Um, we have that number today, so we have the amount in. New spreadsheet after the NOIs close. Okay. 
So could you, for next week, give us copies of the NOIs that have been submitted? Yeah. Because they have it, background information and so forth. Right, 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 right. That would be helpful. Yeah, we'll give you um, an updated checklist that breaks them out so it will look more like a warrant. What's the town building lighting protection? Um, there's been, the police department building yeah. has had a history of what they said has been hit by lightning three times. Um, it's lightning, not lightning, lightning. Lightning, not lightning. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> So we've had um, a couple of insurance claims, um, repair and damage, and still nothing's been done to address the why it's getting hit. So we had um, an engineer come out and look at it and give us a price quote. Um, and it seems like just it's more of a surge protection issue than actual <laughs> lightning strikes. So um, you mean it's a surge? Not from lightning, it's a surge from... Well, it's a surge, the lightning is striking somewhere, but it's not striking the building. Okay. So you're not going to need lightning rods around the building, um, but it's hitting somewhere in that area and traveling through the lines and going into the building, and there's no surge protection, so it's taking out different systems. That, so this last time, it took out all the uh, external video cameras. So those all had to be replaced. Um, so we started looking at the other buildings, and none of the other buildings have any sort of surge protection um, on them. So that's what we were trying to wrap up uh, a quote to provide that on all all the town buildings. And we'll have more information on that. Is I mean, we're not we're not we're we're not, we're not close to evaluating the merits of any of no. these at this stage of the game. This is just a list of what exactly. NOIs have been submitted so far. But, but, but if I, I'm going to ask a question regarding the item number seven, which is the carpeting in town hall, because we last year had decided that we were going to do that using this current fiscal year's budget. And, the, and, and so I, just, I, I will be curious to find out when we get to it what, what all um, didn't happen and happened to change that and how that relates to item 29 down below of the carpet and TC cabinet removal. Uh, so that's something I'll be curious to know about. Likewise, I'll be curious to know about last year, item 22, last year we had already, I thought we already approved this. Now maybe we're talking of some construction. Different, last year we approved engineering and this is a separate yeah. piece of the equation. Okay. Right. So this is actually two different uh, notices of intent. Yes. One of which I don't think made it onto your summary. So um, the qualification of appointed officials. No, that's not. Yeah, it doesn't have that on there. Yeah. So that's a separate one. So we're up to actually 38. That's 39. Two thirty-sevens. Right. Uh, Thirty-eight. Yeah. 39. What's 39? There's 237s on the sheet. I got you. There's no, uh, oh, there's 237s. All right, so. That's a, this is quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, and, and we've got a special, so. Well, it's even, it's even more things. We have a, we have a number, yeah, there, the um, governance, by, uh, governance task force has two placeholders on there. Yep. Um, we also have a number of articles that were proposed by the selectmen two years ago, which was the um, change elected tax collector to appoint and change elected treasurer to appoint it. Um, and then the tax collector is bringing forth changing the tax collector to collector. And I think we have one on here for combining collector and treasurer. And then another one that I saw that was kicked around was, um, oh, there's the um, Charter Commission, established a Charter Commission. And then um, the Governance Task Force is working on establishing a Finance Department. And I just wanted to give an update on that from what I talked to Barbara about, is that the selectmen can also vote to adopt a <coughs> finance statute that exists and 
then it would go to a ballot and be voted on at the ballot as opposed to going through the town meeting article process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you want more information on that, I can. Should we put that on for maybe four, two, maybe two meetings from now, or? Yeah. Well, that, that would be a selectman vote. No, so it's a selectman vote. It's not. A, it's not a one. Hour. There you go. <clears throat> so, so I, I thought if we discussed it at least, and then uh, you know we wouldn't, we wouldn't vote the first time we discussed it, but we'd have a okay. discussion, and you'd, you'd give us the background from Barbara, and we'd have a chance to see the statute and maybe understand some other towns that might have done okay. something similar. Then we have the um, dog kennel bylaw. Um, I pulled off the part about the leash law. Um, I think that's just a different can of worms from the, um, the planning piece of it. Mm -hmm. So um, Gino and I have talked about that to get that going. Um, the beaver bylaw we had talked about. I see how the library expansion here is has the library gotten the grant from the state yet? They've gotten um, a the letter of commitment. So they they have a laid out timeline of when they will receive funds from the state. What, when is that? Because um, I thought that they weren't going forward this year. They would be bringing the authorization for the, um, basically the town portion towards that expansion, but which I viewed as like the town batch of a grant. Um, and then I don't think they'll be back for the construction funds until the following town meeting. David, is all the library's land currently in the care and custody of the library? The land? Well, in other words, this library expansion is going to take place on this campus generally. Right. But if if the li if the library itself controls a certain portion of this campus and that area is going to be changed, we need a town meeting vote to authorize uh, changing that land from the care and custody of the library or the care and custody of the police to the library, whoever it is. <coughs> okay. I mean, we, we've got to look into that. Yeah. But I don't have just the state sense. Makes sense. Yeah. That's a two thirds vote. So. I don't have Is their for their custody also even if it wasn't taken. Yeah, the transfer from one department. It has to be declared surplus. Right. That's right. Yeah, so so if, if we've got to get a good grasp, get somebody to get a good grasp on those plans, and also go back through the records and figure out how that campus got to be the way it is and, and whether the proper votes have been taken in the past. Otherwise, somebody has a, a hook to hold the whole thing up. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll look at that. And um, I don't have their timeline in my head, so okay. I don't well, have it on my desk. I, I had the impression that the, the, the big event wasn't coming up this, this annual town meeting, but you're saying here basically it is. Well, this is, yeah, this is a portion of the funding that they wanted approval for, but um, I have to have my stuff in front of me to, to look at the time. Yeah, so let's do, it, let's do it when we have all the warrants, I mean, all the NOIs in front of us, we yeah. at least have a more detailed discussion. I don't think we need to go through all the items unless we're still just stalling for Attorney Solomon. <laughs> is that what we're doing? <laughs> I thought we were working industriously. Yeah. Planning for the time, maybe. No, well, that's what I'm saying. Do you think we need to go through these one by one without the benefit of the information? It's not that helpful to to just go through them again. I don't think. I haven't. I haven't read all. Yeah, you were and you were prepared <laughs> to do this. I understand. Yeah, yeah. No, we've just been busy. Complying. And you may have. Where well, you have a placeholder, David? You're anticipating something, but you may not even have an NOI yet. Is that correct? Under like the citizen one. Well, just take yeah, exactly. Take that one. Yeah. Um, I responded to um, Mr. Kaplan and by email, and we need to touch base by phone to see what um, if he's going to go to planning board with a couple of those requests. And then um, I did talk to Mr. Murchison the other day, and 
those were mostly um, procurement type articles that I've talked to Barbara about. So we could develop those, um, but I'm not sure yet. Okay. So are we likely to get more into this next week then? Would you say next week or two weeks? What, what, what no, I would say the 11th and the 18th we should be. Yeah, and, and you're going to yeah. give us the NOIs in our package next yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Length like of time of we'll discussion. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, And maybe, um, maybe what we could do, David, even is break them up with the ones that are have numbers attached to them to one time and the other ones, the policy ones, to another time. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I would suggest that we invite whoever the liaison is from advisory to be here. Right. And whoever the proponent is. To the select. Do you want to get the proponent No, I, I don't know that we're so at that stage yet, but yeah. I think it's more heads up that advisory is at least in the loop and aware of what may be coming. I'm sure. I'm well, sure they get a copy of all the NOIs, just like right. that you'll be getting. Right. But I, just meant, it, it, I don't know if you, what, if that's productive to, just because of time, for you to discuss what you have on paper without them being able to answer. I think we need to just familiarize ourselves with what's on paper, and we, we may have questions yeah. back through you or directly that we can bring to them so later. Before they come in, yeah. flush the... Yeah, yeah because yeah. I, I, I know when I look at something like that, I, you know, any one of these, I'd say, well, here's what I would like to, I would need to know or would like to know. So then we can okay. get that and, message And that, that message goes out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I can see that message. Yeah. So you'd be looking at, in January, them coming in to, okay. Yeah, once the warrant's closed. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, do we, is um, Cap Council here? She's coming in for the second Oh, Barbara's coming in for that one? Okay. Well, David, uh, excuse me, while we're still on FY16 budget, so will you be also in the next, at the next meeting, Ideally, uh, but certainly by the 18th, um, letting us know where you're at on your budget. Yeah, I mean, budget. we, the accountant sent her letter out, and I had a note on there for the selectman departments, and I requested the budgets to be in by the 5th, which is tomorrow, mm -hmm. and nearly impossible for them to, to get because they just got this thing a week and a half ago. Um, but we might have some in by the 11th. And I, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but it just seems to me, you know, just for the four of us to kind of be on the same page with what you're likely to put forward by the end of the year. That's really what I'm talking about. Yes. No, not that we're necessarily finalizing the budget, because then we'll be able to see, you know, we'll have the proponents or the right. budget makers of department heads come in at some point later to the extent we want them to. Yeah. Um, but at least we we're all reasonably on the same page that you're going forward with game. Yeah, play. I mean, I, I don't see anything fancy coming up on the budgets. The one and a half percent equals the yeah. um, $65,000, and just the police overtime needs probably 150. Right. The other ones are all going to be at the one and a half percent. Um, but you, you may be juggling some things and so forth. Well, right? when we look at town accountant and the treasurer's budget, that it's going to take some discussions on um, and I've been looking at those on what, what, gotcha. how much we need to move between those two. Yeah. Um, but that would probably be, um, you know, not a quick discussion. Uh, understood. Do you have anything on the goals and objectives, David? Um, just that I, I've passed them out a couple of times, and, and we still haven't um, voted a, a final. Thing. I know at one time. You know, I said to a work session, I thought we never seem to get to that. Right, right. Um, so I was trying to. The selectmen have, um, I guess, in the past developed goals, and um, I thought we were jointly developing goals, and it was brought up last time that maybe I should have goals that I'm. Um, judged against and then the board of selectmen has a separate set of policy goals. Policy goals yeah. Right. So um, this document was just updated from the same one that I had, you know, six months ago. Yeah. And you know, it, it would just like to get something formalized of 
some sort of document that I'm going to be evaluated on. But would you be looking for something? Because I look at this, and this is a year ago type of a game plan for this year. To, you know, and, and is that what you're looking for versus updating this sort of thing or going forward? If there are updates that 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 you want to make, then we should make Probably them. But it's yeah. but it's meant to be going forward. It's meant to be going forward. Well, and, and also, and also, Peter, I mean, there's two, sort of two two a aspects to this, right? Isn't there? I mean, one one is to, we're supposed to give you an annual uh, you know evaluation. I think premised on what the goals were from the year before, and secondarily, we need to work together to set your goals for the upcoming year, which should mesh with the, the overall goals. But have we set goals for this year? For this past year. I think that's what David is working for in that. But I'm not sure how that's going to We it. never voted. I don't think, we, I don't don't think we were successful getting to that so stage. I don't think we have the goals, goals for last year or this year. Well, I think Dave, David has developed those as a, as a guide to himself, if These. nothing else. Yeah. yeah. With, yeah. With, with our input, but, but no, don't vote. We haven't voted in mm -hmm. that. No, we got to the point where um, yeah, there was a discussion of while well, past selectmen have compiled a list and they've put their name next to the item that they were looking for or who proposed it, and then there was some discussion about you know, we should just have one list. Um, well, we did. That's, that's the policy goals. That's okay. Barbara's one. Yeah. But my, sure. my goals should mesh to achieve. Yeah, and these, these are the goals we discussed this a year ago. A year ago yeah. And these are the things mm -hmm. David was going to work on this year, which are based on, you know, in, in large part on policy and other things that came through. I mean, we all know David did a lot of other things this year. You know, there, were, yeah. there were a lot of sidetracks and have been continued to be sidetracks. But I think, you know, we need to we, we owe David some feedback. I'm not saying it's tonight, but we, we it's, I think it's a job to evaluate the town administrator and I think we need to to do that in some formal way based on some uh, some reporting metric whether it's this if you're not comfortable with this Paul we can come up with a different way of doing it. It's not that I'm not comfortable with it. I, I, I would like to vote it. So vote that next week or whenever it is we'll we'll use that as the basis for that. Yeah but I would ask if, so if you're comfortable with what, what you've got down here I, I would just recommend that you take a real good close look at what you're What's in, well, in I, this frame? I think he's given us that month, he gave us that months ago, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. been on your desk for a year. That's what you've been kind of yeah. Those are I, I think I made some minor okay change so of that's, fiscal year that's the, there. That's what you want us to work off of. That that's good to know. I mean, it's um, if there, if you have something different, then I'm fine with that. But well, the the biggest thing that you do is not on here. The, the, the uh, town administrator is kind of like a fire department. He's constantly getting alarms running, ringing off in his office, and then he goes out and puts out a a uh, fire, not a real fire, but a some kind of crisis somewhere. And so, one of the criteria I think he should be evaluated on is crisis management. Well, because that's really like 90% yeah, of the Yeah, I don't know if it's crisis management, but I would just be broader, because at least in my notes, I wrote to myself, you know, this looks like it's last year's version, number one, and number two, what's not on here is management. So, I, I you know, it's just management in a, in which we could work towards better defining, perhaps, but I think that that... Would that, that, would that be, what we would define going forward for next year? Yes. Those are these are additional things we want to add to that list or change on that list for next year. But these are the things. The way I say these are the things that David told us a year ago were the goals. We did discuss them. We may not have formally voted them. We probably didn't I don't remember voting them. But I think that's. I think it's only fair to have that. Can we, can we schedule it for next week or for? The, the there was some after that? talk about because we had a. There was a spreadsheet from. I think Jim Purcell that started that with goals, but that kind of specifically related to 
it was more knowledge. a task list, wasn't it? It was more. His was more of a task list. It was, and he was updating us the progress of various things from the columns and the DOR yeah, right. report and so forth. Right. Okay. And then there was an older list from the selectmen, which I, I think was probably yeah. four years old. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think well. we need a little more rigor in the evaluation process than we've had in at least my experience. I think we, you know, we did evaluate you guys last year, but it wasn't against the metric really. It was more of a, I guess, an informal type of discussion. And, um, this would be, you know, this would be something we, we could uh, use as the basis for discussion, develop a new one for next year, and then also have the kind of discussion you talked about where we have collective goals, either that individuals want to have set out or hopefully the, the whole group endorses. Right. And we did that through a work session last year. We didn't do that at a regular meeting. It was a public meeting, obviously, but it was, a, right. it was not a meeting where we were distracted by a lot of other I suppose it's the history of this board to put together its vision for the community and what the board is going to do to carry that out by putting together this list of things. And then we take those and evaluate ourselves after a year to see what have we accomplished, how far along are we. What obstacles that we run into. And we, we really haven't done that until since I've been on the board. We had the discussions, but we haven't had the feedback. And I know David's put it in front of us. So, you know, we, we need to have, and it's got to be a workshop because we're going to get into budget season and town meeting season. And so we're either going to have to do it week after next before the warrant, oh, the warrant closes and we're off to the races. Right. Or we've got to set a special meeting on some different day in January or for some time to do this. Well, its chief advantage is that it, it puts us on the same page and the town of Hester on the same page. Yes. So if we decide our goal is X, we have the debate. We want X, but we don't want X. Finally, we agree on X, and then we all leave here knowing that we are all working towards X. And then a year later, we can say, well, how far did we get on, on X? But if we don't have that discussion, I may be doing X, he may be doing Y, you may be doing Z, he could be doing W. And you don't have the coherence and the... Right, uh, I'd the, like to get back to that. I think, I think that's a good approach. Yeah, I think it's great. It's a question of how we get the letters on the page, if you will, uh, for our discussion. Okay. Whether we depend on David for that, not, not only for his, but for, for what Paul's talking about, sort of... You know, what we've done the past is each selectman puts down what he'd like to see accomplished during and the next year. And we did that last year. It, 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 we did have that discussion last year. We, it just never ended up yeah. gelling into anything, and we got either uh, sidetracked by town meeting stuff or something. Yeah, that's our, our, we're kind of like firefighters, too. Well, I, I was talking to David <laughs> before the meeting tonight, and, and one of the things I've noticed, particularly over the past year, and I've only been on this board a year and a half, is how sidetracked you get by, uh, you know, almost individual agenda items of different citizens who have things that are important, particularly important to them, but they also do distract from the business at hand. And, and I'm not saying that they aren't important to Chase. We've spent an awful lot of time this year on those kind of items. And I don't want to say we've neglected any important business of the town, but I think we have neglected the planning type business of the town. And I, I'd like to get back to that. And I think it sounds like you, you're the same mind and, and you, so that's good. All right. Hey, we've got our cable guys here. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. When you, when you call for cable and they don't always show up right away when you expect it. So. That's right, yeah. How was the ride? Oh, great, thank you. I, uh, you know, I have a four-hour window I give to every board. Excellent. <laughs> Like so you guys are heroes. So you've really accomplished yeah, a lot. You've really put well, thank a, you. a deal together that's that's quite good. Thank you. A lot of uh, of uh, nice features to it. Congratulations. Thank you. Very much. We have a nice letter here too that I understand you you guys worked out. Yes, we're very happy. And I just very briefly I have to thank Frank Foss of Comcast. Very cooperative. It's you know it's a tough negotiation process. He's a tough negotiator. But at the end of the day, you know the board. We made clear what the board wanted, the town wanted, and those last, the last side letter we're very happy with. Um, you know, the three side letters there, um, the, the service to public buildings, which we indicated, which means that you'll have a continuation of what's called, used to be called and still is expanded basic TV, so your public buildings have CNN and 
uh, the uh, New England Cable News and the Discovery Channel, the channels that they want, and that was made clear without any words that saying we could change it or we, we can, it's uh, temporary, it's there in the letter, very clear, Comcast always stands by its side letters. The, uh, the senior discount, uh, which continues the current senior discount for anyone who has it and continues a senior discount, not as, as robust as we like, but the best they provide in the state going forward uh, based on certain financial qualifications. Um, and, and the other letter, which is really, we're one of the maybe three towns in the Commonwealth together with the city of Cambridge that has the, the PEG letter. And that is, we talked about before, that will come speak to with you, as I call it, not left behind. Sherburne doesn't want to be left behind because we're signing a license now and something comes about in two years and three years. And so Sherburne's really right now, I think, one of maybe the fourth community that I know of, I uh, know many that don't, that have been able to receive a letter that says three things. One is uh, the issue of uh, um, high definition that now, as we talked about, the cameras and the equipment, the signal that your access corporation has is high definition. But then when it gets to the cable company, it has to be down converted and it loses its clarity uh, uh, picture. And we don't think that should, should happen. We don't want PEG access to be the only channel that's not as clear. This is a commitment by Comcast to come back and speak with you. So particularly important if and when, and it's really if and when, they, they provided it elsewhere that Sherburne besides having the moral high ground to say come and speak to us, has documentation that they said they come back and speak to you. Why would they speak to you? Because they understand that you don't want to be left behind, you be one of the first, want to be one of the first communities to receive that. And that applies also, uh, importantly, although somewhat less importantly, the PEG access video on demand, as we said, putting your programs could be uh, on demand on the cable, not just on the internet, and also the electronic program guide, so people can look on the program guide and see what program is happening when. They can set their DVD to go to that, to record it, and those are things that uh, appreciate that the Comcast has put in the letter for Sherburne in one of the few communities, and thankful that it was done, it's a real, it's a real plus. And the license, as you indicated, remains as we last spoke, really meeting the town's financial needs, the service throughout the whole community, which this board made a fundamental issue for the new license that, uh, frankly, does not exist in many licenses. Even some towns that had service to the full community in recent licenses have had density requirements. That's not true here in Sherburne. And you know, you as a board made that clear on two occasions. In fact, what made the difference with Mr. Foss was when he came here and he heard directly from the board members. So thank you for that. Uh, and so I, as your counsel, I believe this is ready to sign. Um, I, speaking with Diane, what I generally do is I put this on sort of bonded paper so that, that we have two originals for each, for, for the town, two originals for Comcast, so that, you know, when you, if, you know, in the modern world when you're looking at papers, it doesn't, it all looks the same, and so we have bonded living paper here that, that you can keep, bind, and you'll have electronic copy. So my recommendation, and I think certainly the committee and, 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 uh, and Doug, is that this is a, an excellent license going forward, and we ask that you, uh, you sign it here tonight. Can you give us the terms of the motion that exactly that you want it to read? Um, sure. I, and uh, no matter words, I would say a vote that the Board of Selectmen um, uh, issue and uh, uh, sign uh, the cable television renewal license granted to Comcast of Massachusetts One Inc. dated December 4th, 2014. So moved. Yeah. It, it, so yeah. We're going to give you six so we have some of this discussion. I just had a couple of questions. You mentioned these letters. Are these letters in any way incorporated into this agreement, Bill, or referenced in the agreement? Good point. Um, I think what you could do if you want to add to the motion, and I think yeah. it's a fair way to do, to do that, is to is to add that, um, although not not as part of the license, that uh, recognize and reference in the motion that uh, uh, that uh, that provided to the board of selectmen. Uh, for the town of Sherburne, uh, three side letters that are acknowledged by the board uh, and uh, and uh, are uh, accepted. Acknowledged, good, acknowledged and accepted by the the, the board of selectmen uh, uh, separately. And I think that's it'd be good for the record to show that those letters, thank you, were part of what was the full picture, even though they're not part of or referenced in the license itself. Thank you. Very good. So did you get that, Diane? Yeah. Wow, you're good. 
Okay, so I, I would ask for an amendment to your motion, Paul, if that's okay? I second your amendment. Okay. Right. Or accept the amendment as the mover. Okay, very good. Friendly amendment. We second the uh, amendment. Excellent. Okay, so uh, further discussion? All in favor of? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. If we have four originals. I'll give to your clerk if people want to sign them. In fact, I can. Why don't I sign them now? And uh, four originals. And as I indicated to Diane Rowley, uh, that uh, that two of these we sent back to Frank Foss, and two of the signature sheets that were turned to signature sheets. Wait, before the cable committee leaves, yeah, could, I could you tell recognize, recognize them, and so we can give thanks to yes, absolutely your service to the community. Yeah. So we have joining us Art Crandall and also serving in the Grover Sherman Cable TV Board, and Tom Oberst, thank you very much. A missing member is Bill Miller, who has been uh, vocal while we were looking at the options. And so thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, th thank you. It's really, really well done. Thank you. Themes and volunteers making it happen. Yeah, this, is, <laughs> this is a lot of work. So we should at least to really have, to take a picture of this momentous event. <laughs> Take a video, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now. Okay, but you know when, when President Obama signs a bill, he's got a whole crowd of people letters. around him and he one the pen, pen for every every letter and then passes the pen around assuming hey, it's Yeah, yeah sure, you want this pen? <laughs> <laughs> he has the you just have to give me a dollar twenty nine. <laughs> That's my pipe <laughs> special. You want they want to sign? Oh yeah. While we're doing that, I want to point out something that uh, it's actually put us in good stead. The the license is slightly delayed from when it expired in May, and so now it's it'll last another ten years as of today. Okay. And times are changing, and now we've got this locked down for another ten years. That's great. So we'll look forward to working with you 10 years from now, Mrs. Renee. <laughs> There's other volunteers in the wings, right? <laughs> Should we date this or leave it blank? Oh, yes, please date it today. Fourth. 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 Thanks, Paul. <clears throat> Only one page? No, no we have, have two more coming. There's four of them, but I don't want to get confused. It's an assembly line up here. No, it's three. When I was a kid, when they put names in alphabetical order, usually I was at the top of the heap. Look at you, Paul. And this one, I'm at the bottom of the heap because you have a C in your name. <laughs> It's just right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do we have, we have one more, more Diane? And and that's one. three. Side three. Here you go. One more. Sure. It's a nice paper, too. Ooh, really? Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's why we hired him. He's really good right. paper. <laughs> <laughs> I, heard, I heard that about you. <laughs> the, the, the letterman had that like one of the top ten reasons <laughs> to hire me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, I always think it, 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 in an age where of, of, of everything electronic, as I say, I know from my town council work, every once in a while it's nice to know easily what the original is. And so, my work, I, you might have done it, my recommendation is a lot of these ladies bind it up and put it in the clerk's office and Slepin's office so you know, you know, it's good. It is. And you have the electronic copy. So, thank you very much. It's, hey, thank you. I appreciate the chance to work with you again. It's, it's a real honor, so thank you. Yeah, and, and thanks for getting out of here. I know it was a struggle with the traffic, and I appreciate you. Persevered. Thanks a lot. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Great job again. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Paul. Okay. And I had a motion someplace to go into executive session. Where did I put that? Do you have it? You have the answer? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. I move that the Board of Selectmen enter into executive session for discussion regarding possible litigation as it pertains to the health agent under Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 and Suffolk Construction versus DCAM 
and that discussing this in public session may have a detrimental effect on the outcome and the board will not return to public session. I need a second and a roll call vote. I second. Okay, having a second, we now have a roll call. Mr. Dorensis. Dorensis votes aye. Okay, Mr. Caruso. Aye. And Mr. Jamo is aye. Having passed by a vote of three to zero, the open session is now closed. We are now in executive session, and we are not coming back to open session.